Hey, what's up? Welcome back to another video here on Free Will Photos. Today, we're going to do something a little bit different than what I normally do. I'm not going to actually edit an image. Instead, I'm going to show you a photo that I already put edits onto. And the goal here is really just to kind of share with you my thought process, because I think photo editing is a lot about the concept that you're going for or the ideas, and then understanding the tools that you have available to you in order to create that said look or vision. So that's what we're going to do today. And if you find value in this content, then please, by all means, smash the like button just because that does help YouTube share this with others. And then last but not least, if you want to pick up on one photo raw and save a little bit of money in the process, consider using my coupon code FREEWILLPHOTOS20. It'll save you a little bit of money and I make a small commission, but that's all at no extra charge to you. And I greatly appreciate everyone who supports the channel in that way. Now, let's go ahead and jump into the computer and take a look at this image. All right, so here we are inside of All One Photo Raw, and we're going to take a look at this photo. So this is the before look, and, you know, this is just straight out of camera. It's a raw image. It is what it is. And then here is what I officially got to on the back end. So first things first, we'll just go ahead and pull this up, get a little bit more real estate here. I'm using Brilliance AI, all right? Now, everyone knows I have my Brilliance AI tune. If you don't know that, then let me show you really, really quickly. And if you want to screenshot this or pause the video to take a look and just get an idea of what I'm actually doing with Bruins AI, then you can do that. But the so what here for me, I find that 70% or 70% of the amount, if you will, it works the best overall. And then of course I increase the midtones because I do want to boost that a little bit more. And then I pull up all my contrast as well. With the color, I'm still playing around with that. And I find that negative two does roughly what I want to do as far as the temperature goes. But to counteract some of that temperature going towards the blue end, then I also move my vibrance up and let on one kind of figure out where that goes. I sometimes leave the apply local adjustments automatically turned on. Right now I'm leaving it turned on and then I just turn them off if I don't like what it's doing in the actual image that I'm applying it to. So I've gone through and I've turned off everything in the image. So that way we can kind of build everything up gradually and I can talk you through a lot of what's happening here. So the first thing that I used was Bruins AI. And so here's what Bruins AI actually did to the image. And yes, I do have the local adjustments turned on. We're going to get to those here in a little bit, but I have this pulled down to 51 on this image because I think that that's what looks the best. And this is what 51 kind of looks like. Every image is going to look different. So I'm not going to go over these adjustments here, but I will make note that I did pull up on the vibrance originally from what the image or from what Bruins AI actually gave it, I went ahead and pulled up on the vibrance just a little bit. So just so you know that that did happen. Now, the note that I'll make about Bruins AI is it's helping develop the raw image, just like a negative photo used to have to be developed in the dark room. That's essentially what develop is doing for my photo here. And that's why I decided to just go with using the Bruins AI. And I recommend using that on all of your raw images, even just JPEG images, but definitely on raw images. This is actually one of the beautiful things about On One Photo Raw in the way that your workflow is set up. You can start with a developed module, which is like the dark room, the digital dark room. Then you can get into the local adjustments. Now, the local adjustments, I'm not going to go into what those are. If you are familiar with On One, then you know what local adjustments are. But let's go ahead and turn on the Bruins AI one. And it's very subtle. I don't even think you can really tell what it's doing. Let's hit the letter O so we can see where the mask is. And of course I'm on the wrong mask. So yeah, I don't think you can really, it's like these really, really finite things, probably not doing anything of significance. So this is where I would turn off this particular effect because I don't think it's actually doing anything, but for the sake of revealing what was on the photo, I'll leave it on because I did actually leave it on. Then we have the next adjustment and I probably should have labeled these, but hindsight is 2020. And what this is doing, if we hit the letter O, you can see it's selecting the background 
of the image. And I used the depth mask to create this particular look. And what I wanted to do was kind of darken down everything except for this foreground leaf. And so that's what this particular effect is doing. And then of course I duplicated it, but this time I pulled down on the saturation. So this is essentially the exact same mask from the previous adjustment from the background getting darkened adjustment. And I just pulled down on the saturation. Now, the reason I did that is I wanted to make a separation between my foreground and my background, and I'm gonna do that in the effects. So I was preparing the photo for the effects that I have in mind of making this a little bit more of a contrasty, moody type of image, right? So we'll go ahead and minimize that. And then what I noticed down here in the bottom left corner is it was just a little too bright. So if I turn this off and turn it back on, and then if I hit the letter O, you can see the mask and you can see that I'm really just applying a little bit of negative exposure into this area. I think the opacity, nope, opacity is up all the way. So I'm applying 100% of that effect into just that area. And again, the way that I use local adjustments, at least on this image, is really to set the canvas for my effects, all right? I'm monitoring the exposure, making sure that I have a good balance in the image before I send it over to the next step, which is where I get a little bit more creative, all right? And that is in the effects module. Now, I only used one filter to really edit this image, and that is the cross process. And you can see, well, the, the, the beautiful thing about cross process is it uses color filters and it really does build mood into the image. And I don't use this particular filter that much, but when I got rid of all the color, I knew that I was going to re-add the color using the cross process filter. So that's why I set that up that way so I can really control this look. Now there's tons of ways that I could have gotten this exact same look. I probably would have had to have done it with a few more filters. The cross process filter just allowed me to get to this particular look a little bit faster. I could have gone with just the yellow and that has a nice effect. This is more toned back and not as contrasty or moody. And it doesn't work for what I was really trying to go for, or at least the vision that I had for this image. So that's why I went with Yellow Strong, which is much more punchy. And I think it complements the photo well. Now, this filter, obviously, you have some sliders here. And I could go over each of these sliders, but the goal here isn't really to show you how to use all of the filters. The goal here is just to show you how to think through building up your edit in your image. And for this one, really like by default, I think it's up a little bit higher and that's just too much of this effect, right? Like I'm starting to get blue leaves here. That doesn't look good in my opinion, which is why I just started to pull this back until it got to a point where I was like, okay, I can tolerate what's happening with the leaves back here. There's not gonna be much attention that's going to those here in the center. And if I wanted to, I could even mask that away a little bit from here, but I didn't wanna do that. So that's the cross process. And then of course we have the dynamic contrast. Now, dynamic contrast is a staple of a filter. Let me hit the letter O because I do have a mask on here. And of course, I gotta actually activate the mask that I'm using. I'm just putting it right in the center of the image. And I'm doing that because I don't need it everywhere. I really only want it right down here in the middle. If I turn, this is a relatively sharp image. I think I shot this, yeah, I shot it with my 85 RF lens, which is a really, really sharp lens. I love using it. And this is the end result with all of the effects built up. So if I turn it off, you can see this is what I came out of the camera with right into on one and said, okay, it's time to get to work. What can I do? And this is the end result. So hopefully you found some value, in, you know, me kind of talking through this. If you got questions about my workflow or what I think about when I'm editing an image, then please drop that down in the comment section below because every image really is different. This photo, I was really inspired by the detail on the leaf. So I wanted to make the attention 
right here on the leaf. And I don't think any of the viewers, anyone who sees this photo would say, you know, I think this photo is about these leaves in the background. There's even a very shallow depth of field or a narrow focal plane right here on the leaf. And that was all intentional. I did everything like, and, and that's the other thing when it comes to photo editing, it really starts at the beginning. Like when you go to capture an image, you really have to have in mind, what do I want this photo to look like? And I knew like the day that I photographed this, it was a little overcast. It was raining, obviously. And it had, there was a break in the rain. And I said, you know what? Let me go outside and capture some of these leaves because apparently I'm just fascinated by leaves. And this is what I captured with my 85 and my Canon EOS R6. So hopefully you found some value in this content. If you did, please smash the like button. It really does help push this into the algorithm and share it with other people if you find any value in being able to share this with people. So with that being said, I look forward to seeing you all in the comments. And until next time, I want you to stay inspired and keep creating. Peace.